As a Wargamer, I want to get the most out of my miniature collection. Whether that's Warhammer 40,000, whether that's Battletech, whether that's Pacific Rim or Judge Dredd miniatures, I want to utilize the resources that I have. And what we see with certain war games that have the ability to scale, you can play war games that are mass combat games. Um, we see this with Warhammer 40,000, where one model represents one model, and there are hundreds and hundreds of models on the table. Or it can be something that's, that's a little more abstract. Um, DBN, DBA, uh, DBA when I'm playing my Romans. I've got a stand, I've, I've got a little... Uh, miniature stand with four Roman dudes on it, that doesn't represent four Roman dudes. It, it represents an abstract number, part of my legion, part of my battle group. So you're, you're really moving around kind of placeholders. So with these mass scale games that represent a massive battle, on the opposite side, you have skirmish-based games where, yes, there's this big battle going on around you, but here's 10 models. Here's 12 models. Here's eight models interacting in this very, very small footprint. Or it represents um, a specific action. You might have to breach a building. You might have to board a spaceship. Um, one of the um, interesting kill teams that we played was we just have literally one building. It's, it's a building, rather large building, ruined, bombed out, kind of 40k mechanica style and that's that's where the encounter takes place and it's almost like a very very focused focused game as opposed to this big battle so i like playing skirmish games because it's a way that i can take my models from from larger mass combat systems and play them on that skirmish format on a side note on a side note, a dangerous place to be as a war gamer is always looking at a new gaming system. But I want, if you're interested in pure skirmish systems and, and a really, really amazing and solid rule set, I want to invite you to check out God Tier. It's an amazing skirmish game. I'm going to leave it at that. Amazing miniatures, dynamic rules, multiple activations, different strategies and win conditions. I've pushed up to my channel here under the God Tier playlist, rules introduction, war bands, and what I think about it. We'll put that framework over to the side. So one of the things that we first notice, um, especially if you're coming from a mass combat, I've got 100 Space Marines, two Baby Titans, five Land Raiders, and, and just tons and tons of tanks. If you're coming from that to now you have 10 guys, there are two fundamental shifts that you need to make, two fundamental things that you need to be aware of, and that's what I want to focus in on this video. And, and this applies to any type of, Wargaming skirmish system. There's going to be a couple of little nuances that you'll have to adjust for your rule set, but these are kind of the, the two fundamental rules of skirmish. Everything else is built on this. The first is rules of engagement. You never engage one-to-one. -one. We talk about this idea of dice pools, and I've pushed up to the Wargaming Tactics playlist here um, various fundamentals. Dice pools, if you're playing a dice-based game, or, or card pools, if you're playing a card-based game, or a hybrid dice and card. But the idea with dice, I, I roll dice to make stuff happen in a war game. Fog of war, the effects of training, equipment, armor versus anti-armor, whatever it's going to be. The more dice I roll, the more chance of a success for something positive to happen. If I fire at your squad and I roll three dice... That's really not going to do that much. But if I have a mob of cultists rolling 60 dice, even if they have poor training and poor equipment, I'm just going to bury you in volume of dice. I'm just going to bury you in dice. So what we see with skirmish right away is your dice pool is extremely limited, extremely limited. I'm just kind of making it generic. You have a standard trooper that carries some sort of laser gun. You know, they roll 1d6. You've got a heavy laser, maybe it rolls 3d6. You've got um, some other weapon that rolls maybe 2d6. You don't have a lot of dice. It's not like I've got, here's 100 Space Marines firing and it's 100 dice. You know, here's my baby Titan firing and I've got 50 dice that I'm going to put down. You have a very, very limited dice pool. So now two things there start to happen. The first is losses really count. Losses really count. Not that I ever want to lose stuff in miniature games, but it's like my Cornate Berserkers are running up and I've, they're screened by cultists. You kill 60 cultists. I'm like, okay, and it doesn't matter, man. I've got 40 more. 
Like it's no problem. I don't want to take those losses, but I can absorb those losses in a higher scale game. In skirmish, I've got 10 dudes. I lose three guys. That is massive. That is massive. So losses count. I don't have redundancy. We're, we're frameworking this. Redundancy in wargaming is where you have multiple things heading towards the same outcome to smooth out the probability or if the dice gods hate you and you roll just awful and constantly rolling ones, I, I, I can smooth that out a bit, right? If I have um, one is none, two is one, three is some. So within that framework, if I have a target to one of your miniatures, we're playing a skirmish game, right? You're moving across the catwalk at the top. I've got line of sight to you. I could take that shot. I, I don't take that shot with just one guy. I don't move one of my guys out and take that shot. I may hit. I may not hit. I may kill you. You may make a save. You may make a reflex or an evasion. Something might happen. I want to engage two or three to one. You pop out one guy. I want to pop out three guys. So this way I can shoot three dice pools or three dice at you. Now, where this, this positioning comes very important, if, um, if you pop out one guy, you, you take the junior squad member, costs nothing, they're equipped with nothing, they've got no armor, they're just nothing. They're, they're dice bait, and, and you run that across the catwalk. I need to look and say, well, if I take three dudes and I pop them out and I pop those shots off, do you have like um, a heavy stubber hiding that then's going to pop around and spray all three of my guys? Are you going to toss some grenades or area effect attack that could kill all my three guys? I, I, I need to look. If I can't engage three to one optimally with, with minimal um, pushback, I might not want to take that. So I'm looking essentially to gang up on one target. The second. Now, this is easier said than done, right? I love my war gear. I love lots of cool stuff. I love the trickology. I, I, I say that to framework it. Don't necessarily do what I do unless you're aware of it. What I mean by that is numbers are absolutely, absolutely everything. The more miniatures that you have in your warband size, you could take a couple of losses, not that we want to, but you can maximize your dice pools. You can also control more of an area, especially area control when it's a small footprint. Every warband will have a certain size of followers, um, depending on the tech, depending on the organization. Some war games, skirmish games, you have a, a currency system. You build your warband out of power points or gold crowns or weird stone or something like that. So your warband has a certain size. Generally speaking, and then, and then you can equip your warband out. Obviously, regular soldiers are going to be not as good as elites and heavy, and obviously your leader is going to have the most possible war gear. It's tempting to take um, my leader of my warband and give him a plasma pistol and give him a power sword and give him this and give him that and jack him up. He's only one model. He's only one model. If I don't take that plasma pistol and I just take a bolt pistol and I take a chain sword, that might put down two or three other models on the table. Even if it's just a base trooper with um, you know, an auto gun or a stubber, that's fine. Right, looking and really saying within the framework, how can I get my mob of models? Get the maximum model count that you can. It's like you go through two cycles. I've got my power points. I've got my throne gelt. I've got my weird stone. I've got my gold pieces. I've got whatever my currency is going to be. Fill out the roster with the maximum first. Then go back and now look at war gear or options that you can upgrade. Taking a bunch of elite models, um, that's... That puts you thin to losses. Even if it's really hard to kill those models, it's still possible to kill those models. So those two frameworks, very, very important. Very, very important regardless of the system that you're playing.